Okay. Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. Sorry, we were having problems. Uh, I tried three times and it wasn't working, so I hope you're patient and we'll come back because I was trying and it kept kicking me off. So, three times it kicked me off. So, uh, if nobody joins me or joins me later, I guess I know people will see it tomorrow. So, I'm very sorry. Technical difficulties. Uh, that happens in life sometimes. So, sorry about that. Hey, Sheila, good evening. How are you? Hope you're doing well. And uh, sorry. I'm sorry I was having technical difficulties. So, hey, Betty. Sorry I was having technical I've just been saying sorry, sorry, because it was kicking me off. Hey, Janet. It was kicking me off, kicked me off three times. Sharon, hey, good evening. So, sorry about that. Um, Samuel saved the day once again and got me back on. So, uh, Christopher who I could tell is my child uh, in different ways. Uh, I got home tonight. He goes, Mom, you got your hair cut. I'm like, yes, I did. He notices. I always, I'm known for noticing when people get new glasses or get their hair cut or something. I, I pick it up because I always say people's faces are like a puzzle. And when they look different, I'm trying to figure out what's different. And, um, and I'll usually, some, I've had a lot of people say to me, you're the first person to notice I have new glasses, and sometimes they'll go weeks. So, so anyway, Christopher said that to me tonight. Yes, Christopher, I did get my hair cut. You noticed. So, uh, just to be a little cooler, because it's summer. Hey, Sh Shirley, I see you popping up there. Hey, Janet and Kathy and Sharon. Excuse me. Okay, well, I don't know if Griffin got the rain. Um, uh, you probably did. Uh, I was over in Conyers. My hairdresser is in Conyers and, um, or my hairstylist. We were talking about this today because I was talking about a friend who had cut my hair short when I was, um, on internship and what I call her, called her, I didn't call her a hairdresser. I called her something else. Um, I said, well, that's really an old term. She goes, well, that was probably appropriate then. I'm like, yeah. So, but my hairstylist. So I was over there and, uh. Um, there's a pharmacy right next door and they have a lunch counter. It's really cool. They have an old uh, soda fountain lunch counter and their prices are amazing. And, uh, oh, thanks, Karen. And um, anyway, so I had gone to get an egg salad sandwich for lunch because I love egg salad and they have great ones. And of course, they're not serving. I mean, you can order it, pick it up and take it with you. But they have ice cream cones, kids' size, which to me is like a big scoop, for 75 cents. So I did go back and got a, got a cone, got a kid's butter pecan. But because I did that, the rain started to pour. And it. we heard thunder and saw lightning. We heard thunder like four or five times. It was really close. And it poured, it poured buckets, buckets. I was in there waiting about 15 or more minutes before I left because I didn't have a, my umbrella was in the car because I didn't pay attention to the weather and I knew that we had chances of showers all week during, you know, afternoon, evening. So I got caught. So anyway, so I waited. But um, so that's why I say that because the um, devotion I'm using tonight is actually from June. I had not used it and it was about thunderstorms. And I was thinking about that because of going through the thunderstorm today. And of course we had rain yesterday and I think we're supposed to have rain all week. And I know Illinois had rain and I know, uh, we have friends in, uh, Iowa, young couple that we married Jim and Abby and they, uh, Cedar Rapids is where they live. And, um, excuse me. And they are going to be without power. They said possibly for weeks. Because the storm up there last weekend was so bad that um, there's no power in the area at all. So uh, Jim's mom and dad, who live in St. Louis, who are dear friends of ours, I was uh, talking to Joni, and she said that they're hoping they're going to come down for a few days. So I want to lift up all the people in the Midwest, Iowa, all the places that were badly affected by the storms last week, the farmers, because uh, it's affected crops. Um, so I want to pray for all those places and uh, ask you to join with me 
and lifting up prayers just that they can get things going again. And, oh, I just feel for people who can't leave and don't have any air, don't have any fans, and are dealing with humidity and, and just terrible. So, um, anyway, but I, I lift them up tonight and all the people who are dealing with that. But the, um, so the devotion goes with Psalm 29. Um, hey, Chris, oh. You probably can hear Christopher in the background um, playing a game that he, that he, Samuel's been helping him get on really old games that don't work anymore. You know, they had the CD-ROMs that you used to put them in and make them, well, Samuel's figured out how to make, how to pull things up online and how to fix old codes and um, like he's pulled up um, Microsoft 7 and different stuff like that and been able so now Christopher's used to him uh, doing this. And so now he's like, Samuel, can you find this game? Can you find that game? Um, and so, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, just like life. So, all right, I'm going to read you Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of God's holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the hay, Matthew. Good evening. I love you. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the floods. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And then the verse depicts is the God of glory thunders. And the writer says, I like thunderstorms, especially when I have adequate shelter. Yeah, me too. I have experienced thunderstorms from inside a house, from a front porch, from inside a tent while camping and while driving. I am always amazed by the sound of thunder and the brilliance of lightning. I am astonished by their power. God speaks of this power in Psalm 29, describing the thunder as the voice of the Lord, which shakes the wilderness and flashes forth flames of fire, in verses 7 to 8. This display of power is often followed by a sense of calm. Given the storms of life that can and do occur, one understands why David prays. May the Lord give strength to God's people. May the Lord bless God's people with peace, verse 11. When such storms happen, figuratively or literally, we can pray to God for help and deliverance, even as we give thanks for God's power, majesty, majesty, and ultimate assurance of peace. Thank you, dear God, for helping us through life's storms. In Jesus' name we pray. And the prayer concern is for victims of natural disaster, just as I was mentioning um, what's happened to people in the Midwest and all that they're dealing with. So it talks about God's voice and the display of power and often followed by a sense of calm. Um, I've been through those kind of storms. I bet you have too, um, literally, where this, there's so much rain and thunder and power and everything. And that um, when it's all over, though, there's just like this peace that comes upon everything. And it's, there's like a clearing. Um, sometimes I didn't notice a rainbow, but I wasn't really looking. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there had been a rainbow in the sky tonight. Um, but just the sense of calm. And we also go through the storms in our own lives, the things that we struggle through, the painful things that feel like a raging storm that we can't get out of. And we struggle in that. And sometimes we struggle more when we forget that God is with us in all that we're going through and all that we're facing. And some of you may be going through struggles right now, maybe going through difficult times. 
And so I want to encourage you to know that you do not walk alone, that God is with you. And, you know, this afternoon I'd gotten my hair done and got the ice cream cone. And then I'd wait because I was like, well, I just got my hair done. I'm not going to walk because um, a few people walked by and they were just drenched, you know. And I waited and waited and finished my ice cream cone, enjoyed every bite, and then waited to be able to go out to my car because I had to walk about a block down and then cut. Um, and it hadn't completely quit, but it was down. I mean, before it was just like the heavens opened up and just poured, just gushed, this massive amount. And then you're hearing the thunder and you see the lightning. It's like, I am not going out in that because I'm not running in this. And, um, you know, when it calms down and you come through it, it's just, can be such a relief and such a, such a sense of peace and calm. And for those of you who are going through difficult times right now, I hope you know that you are not alone, that you do not walk alone, that God is with you. And I know the struggles um, in life that sometimes we share and others that we don't, both the internal ones we deal with and the external and the, the issues and the problems and um and then sometimes just the overwhelming stress of life, of the things we cannot change and the things we want to try to change, but we just have to wait it out. Sometimes we just have to make it through. And my Aunt Carolyn's on here. And uh, hey, Laura. And my Aunt Carolyn uh, went back to the senior care place where she lives and she's in quarantine right now. And Aunt Carolyn, I just want you to know that this will be over soon. And... Um, that we love you and just hang in there. I'm so glad that you can get yourself on here. It's really nice to have you on. And um, just know that you've been in my daily prayers and thoughts. And I will uh, give you I'll try to give you a call um, in the next couple of days to check up on you. So um, I know not to call you at 9 o'clock Central Time because you always get a call from your son, Larry, so my cousin. So... But uh, just know that we're thinking of you as you hold on during this time of quarantine and wait for it to pass. And pray that your time will be filled as best as possible and that you will not feel alone, but you will feel the love of your family and the love of God with you during this time. Now, last night, if you didn't see it, I said that I was going to. Uh, I shared a thing that talked about reading a Proverbs every day. So I read uh, chapter one, so I'm going to read chapter two tonight because it was talking about there's 31 chapters of Proverbs and to consider reading a chapter a day um, during a month, and it's a great thing to do. I I've read Proverbs a number of times. Um, I find Proverbs interesting because if you read them on a regular basis together, you will notice that there is repetition. There are things that are repeated um, some of it I, I think is really good advice and some of it I'm like, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, but anyway, I wanted to share, uh, chapter two with you tonight of Proverbs. My child, if you accept my words and store my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from God's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. God holds victory in store for the upright. God is a shield to those who walk, whose, bl whose walk is blameless. For God guards the course of the of the just and protects the way of God's faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who lead the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong, and rejoice in the perversiveness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. 
It will save you also from the adulteress, from the wayward wife with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of life. Thus she will walk in the ways of good people and keep to the path of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Well, that's an interesting chapter, isn't it? And it's talking more again about wisdom entering your heart and the knowledge of God. And that wisdom will save uh, the ways will save you from the ways of wicked people. Um, that God will lead you to straight paths um, and to follow God. Interesting. If you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for an understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. So accepting God's words and listening to God and keeping God's commands um, is what Proverbs chapter 2 is inviting us to tonight. Okay, uh, I want to share a couple prayer requests. And I also want to say happy birthday to my dear brother Tim. It is my brother's birthday and I wish him... A wonderful, wonderful birthday. We will talk to him a little bit later. Um, and I hope that he is um, enjoying his day. I sent him a note and he said he was. He was going out. Usually he has one gathering of friends for his birthday. And they go out to a meal together. Um, but with COVID-19, he had he's going to lunch and dinner. So he went to lunch with several of his friends today. Uh and then they were, he had several other friends going to dinner tonight with him. So we will celebrate his birthday on the phone with, on FaceTime with him. But whenever he comes to visit us in the fall, then I make favorite foods of his. I make his favorite, I make whatever dessert he wants. And uh, we celebrate his birthday when he comes here. We sent him some presents back, but uh, I'll have more presents here when he comes, so after all he's my first best friend um he is my brother and um, we are a lot alike and we love a lot of the same things there's things we're different about but um and we're um two peas in a pod in many many ways and many people think that we um uh, look alike think we're twins um and um anyway i love you tim happy happy birthday you made me a sister uh, all those years ago, and you've always been my runaround and best buddy, uh, first best buddy, and I'm thankful every day to God for you, and thankful that I have you in my life, so. A uh, couple prayer requests, um, Cheryl Maples asked for prayers for Vaughn's sister, her name is Janet Kennedy, and, um, Vaughn has gone to be with her, she, um, had shoulder surgery yesterday and she asked for prayers for her healing and recovery and then Vaughn's going to take her to the physical therapist for evaluation tomorrow so we pray that everything went well with the surgery I know that um, she's going to be having some pain um, you know when all that wears off and I'm sure they've given her medicine so I really hope, some, hope that the medicine will help her because um, I, I, I haven't I don't know what kind of shoulder surgery she had but I've had shoulder surgery and I know what it can be like and the pain and dealing with all that afterwards. So uh, we just pray for a good recovery for her, for Janet and ask God to watch over her and be with her. Um, I'm trying to think. And I told you about Tim, told you about my friends in Iowa. Uh, for, oh, I continue to ask for prayers for uh, my friend, Pastor Patty Axel, she did go home from the hospital today, but she has COVID-19 and she had some heart issues that they think were caused by COVID-19 for her. So we just pray for her recovery um, and pray that she doesn't have any more worries of this 
and um, her husband, Jeff, who's also been diagnosed positive, um, but is asymptomatic, and we pray he will stay that way. And I just pray for Patty for a good recovery and some good rest um, in this time. So let me pray for everyone who's dealing with COVID-19 and those who are having to quarantine to wait things out. Uh, Jenny Burke, who I know, and her children in Tennessee are having to do that. And um, I know that there's been schools that have had to close down or classes that have had to uh, quarantine. And so we pray for all of those people, uh, especially those who are affected by it or those who have lost loved ones. So um, we lift them up in our prayers and we remember them uh, in this time. Um, I'm trying to think if I had any other, a couple of, so, um, I think I'm still missing a couple prayer requests from Sunday. And if you didn't hear me last night say, um, I'm going to have my, my prayer book out with me this next Sunday. Um, oh, we want to pray for Pastor Barb's daughter there. I think they're still waiting for some, um, news on her with her help. Uh, she's dealt with some things. Um, oh, Cheryl, I just asked for prayers uh, for your sister-in-law and for Vaughn taking her tomorrow. And uh, Karen, yes, I prayed for Tim. And we'll, we pray that this is the best year yet for him. So um, I'm just trying to think. I don't. I know I've lifted up some other prayers the last few days. Um, and... Uh, Pray for my friend Don Jones, who's dealing with pancreatic cancer uh, and all that he's had to deal with that. Um, Stephen Sanders' friend will still remember uh, Mark and Gloria, third bout of cancer for Mark. Um, and I'm not sure, I can't remember what's going on with him, if he's been anything lately, but continue to, to pray for um, uh, the Schultzes. For Myrna, who had a shoulder replacement, it was she, it was her second shoulder to be replaced, and uh, we pray for her. Oh, and Beth and Roger Mayo, it's their 31st wedding anniversary today, so we lift them up and ask God to bless them with a wonderful year. They've been through a heck of a lot this last year, uh, Roger being so sick and being in the hospital and coming through that, and their son being sick, and... Um, but they're both, thank God, doing well. And so, Roger and Beth, we wish you a happy anniversary. Um, and Janet says, for teachers and students of Pike yesterday, yep, and Lamar today. Um, good evening, Phyllis. We want to pray for Phyllis's um, grandson, if I got that right. I think it's her grandson, who's taking a job as a chef out in the uh, West, right? And your family is getting together tomorrow night to send him off. So we pray for him that he will uh, be safe in his travels. And as he begins this new job, that everything will go as well as possible for him. Uh, we also continue to pray for April Kennedy's son, Tim, for the recovery from his burn on his leg. Um, and we pray for those who are struggling in this time. Uh, those who, um, especially single parents who are trying to figure out what to do. Uh, if their kids are going to be working at home, um, doing school at home, and they're trying to work, we, we especially lift them up uh, that there will be the help they need to help them through uh, this difficult time. So, okay, that's that's what I can think of to now tonight. If you do have any prayer requests, as I always say, please send them to me. You can message me. You can email me. You can text me. It's best to use my church email um, you can use my personal email, but I don't look at it as often. Right now, I'm looking at it because um, after this is done tonight, I've got to send a note out to the church council. Uh, and then I've got to get my boys' paperwork done online for school because they start school next week. So I think we've almost got everything figured out for Samuel to take. He's got to be a senior. Well, he is a senior. Uh, he's taking two college courses through Southern Crescent through the dual enrollment program, and then he'll be taking uh, three classes at high school. So, um, he because he's in good shape, he doesn't need much to graduate. So, he's getting um, some more college credit. 
So, but I think we've got it all figured out. It's been just trying to make it all come together. I think, I think we've done it. So anyway, okay, well, it's been great to be with you tonight. Uh, we'll be together again tomorrow night at seven. Hopefully I won't have any technical difficulties again. If you tried to get on earlier, I three times it shut down on me, but Sam came and fixed everything. Thank God for Sam. I don't know what I'd do without him. Um, so, uh, so tomorrow night, seven o'clock devotions. Friday night is um, Friday night fun. Seven o'clock. Join us for that, um, and then worship on Sunday at ten a.m. Um, and there will be coffee Zoom hour at eleven. And then we have drive-by communion at noon, noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it's been great to see so many of you come out. I hope you'll come out again this week. Um, and remember that uh, thank you again for all your, what you've brought for noisy change. If you haven't got to bring any, um, we are collecting for, um, yeah, Betty, yes, yay, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we will be collecting funds, continue to collect funds. For Lutheran World Relief, that will get things directly to those most in need uh, as they work to replace the personal kits uh, that they were doing and baby kits and and the quilts that were made. So we will um, we will take whatever bit we get and we will add it to that and we will uh, help them uh, do our best to be part of many many places and many churches working together uh, to try to replace what has been lost. Uh, so that those especially who are in such great need um, will receive that help through Lutheran World Relief. So uh, uh, I'm still working on that, and uh, I'll be getting more. Oh, and if you don't mind, I think I asked last night, I am going to the dentist tomorrow, which to me, the dentist doesn't bother me, okay? I've had all kinds of dental work. No matter what I do, I always have problems with my teeth. I, ha I don't have the best of teeth. Um... Thank God things are slowing down some, but uh, I'm getting the rod put in for a dental implant. I had two teeth taken out in the very back. They're not going to replace the one the farthest back, but the second to the farthest, I decided to get a dental implant. So tomorrow they're putting in whatever the metal rod is in, and I'm not getting the um, Novocaine because the dentist said it was only going to hurt for like 10 seconds, and I figured, okay... I can handle 10 seconds. Um, and I'm hoping it doesn't give me a headache afterwards. So if you would just say a prayer that it would all go well, uh, as well as possible tomorrow, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, now, before we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great night. Have a good morning. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Remember to love your neighbor as yourself. Wear your mask. Protect other people because that's loving our neighbor. And remember what I say all the time. God created science and science is good. So we listen to the scientists. And right now what they're telling us is wear our mask to protect others as well as ourselves. All right. Thank you all. Have a great night. Or good morning, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Take care.